Hi, uh, we're going to do a small video on spinal drains today just to help you guys when you have a case the next day that has to have a spinal drain in so you can review. Um, hopefully you'll find this helpful. So, so the pack will look something like that. It'll say lumbar catheter, close tip, and you're going to open that on a sterile, a sterile field. Uh, so you'll have the contents of your spinal drain pack, which will be here. And then you will be opening either a spinal set or an epidural set with the contents of that, um, that you will use to assist in your insertion. Now in your spinal drain pack, you will have your spinal catheter, which is this one here, that needle, which is this one here. You'll have a metal injection piece. Um, you'll have your white port piece, and you'll have this uh, little pyramid shape connector, which you will see is incredibly important, okay? Um, on your set, you will need local uh, for in, local for infiltration um, in the skin. You will have your drape, your drape here. You'll have uh, some saline, which is what you'll throw, you'll um, uh, flush the catheter with, and a syringe that you will use to flush the catheter with, um, as well as uh, aspirate from your catheter once it's in. So the first thing you're going to do is to attach that little metal piece here to the catheter and flush that with some saline. And then you're going to orientate yourself to the catheter markings. Now the catheter markings are not what you'd expect them to be if you're used to an epidural catheter. The epidural catheter, as you know, the, um, the double marking here is 10. This is not true for the spinal drain catheter. As you can see, the, the one marking is at the end of the spinal needle here. So this is 10. And the second marking is 15. Okay. Now, once your catheter is in this patient's skin, you're going to be somewhere between that first and second marking. Okay. Next step, you're going to have your patient, uh, your catheter threaded through that little pyramid shape connector. And I usually flush it, um, rub everything in saline to make it a little bit easier uh, to thread because it is very, very sticky. Now your patient will be sat up in the nice, nice curved back position. I always use ultrasound to make sure that I have the correct level because we, as we know, we're often in a space higher than we think we are. And for spinal drains, I feel like it's important to know exactly where you are. So I always use ultrasound, but not everybody does. Um, so my next step after that would be to do a spinal. So I use my 25 gauge Whitaker um, to make sure that I have CSF on the track that I go. Again, not everybody does that. Some people will start just with local infiltration and then using the uh, spinal um, drain needle like they would use it as, uh, like they would do an epidural and use it as a TUI with a loss of resistance technique. You want to try and have that angle fairly careful at so that your drain will thread better. Uh, if, you, if you're in too much of a 90 degree angle going in, you're going to find resistance to threading. Once you get to the correct position, you will move, remove the transducer from the needle and you should see a bit of a rush of CSF. You're going to start threading that catheter in. Note the little um, pyramid piece here again, the cone piece that acts as a bit of an introducer there to stiffen your catheter. <clears throat> so at this point now, you're well beyond the, the tip of the needle. I usually put in about an extra 10 to 12 centimeters of catheter in addition to what I want in the patient. So ending up between the third and the fourth marking. Uh, because uh, it's very difficult to do counter pressure on this very flimsy catheter and it almost always just pulls back with the needle to the extent that the needle is coming back. Make very sure that you keep that little um, pyramid piece or that little cone piece 
because you are no, you are going to need it for the next part of the spinal drain. So as we've said before, um, the markings are not like the epidural markings. So if you hit the space at about six centimeters to have about five centimeters in the space, you're going to be here between the first and the second marking. Okay. The next part is to assemble the catheter, um, the catheter connection piece that will hook up to the spinal drain. So again, you have this little cone piece that's going to go over your spinal catheter. So in that direction, so the spinal catheter, will, so the cone piece slips over that spinal drain here. Um, and then you hook up this little white connector, this um, spinal um, drain proximal part gets pushed back. And then the cone piece gets pushed back on top of that. And um, uh, you do a little tie around it to connect it. After that, we hook up to the, the spinal drain setup, which looks like this. Um, the one that you're going to be using will actually read ventricular up top. It's in centimeters of water. We usually set it to about 10. Um, and there's uh, these two sets of stopcocks here. You'll have the red stopcock on the side here where you open and close uh, dra to, to, to drainage. And then the little yellow stopcock here, which is once you've got your hourly drainage and you close that stopcock off to the patient, um, this drains through. Um, and